Hi, I'm Ryan Murphy and I'm with Blue Feather Torches. Today we're going to show you how to make, make your first weld. We're going to start by turning on our oxygen tank. And being that this is the first time we're turning the bottles on today, we're going to open the valve up slow so that way we don't get, just get a rapid rush of gases to our regulator. And you're going to open the valve up all the way until it hits the stop. Next we're going to set our pressure. I like to run five pounds. So we're going to bring this up until five pounds. And this might not be critical to bring up slow, but I like to bring it up slow anyways. And there's five pounds. Next we're going to do our acetylene. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to crack it until we get tank pressure. Then we're only going to open this up a half a turn. We only open up a half a turn simply because if something happens, you can quickly turn the valve off. So there's a half a turn. We're also going to run five pounds on our acetylene. And keep in mind you never want to exceed 15 pounds because the acetylene can start to be unstable. And another reason why I'm running five pounds on the oxygen and five pounds on the acetylene is because I don't want to backflow of oxygen and acetylene going into our hoses which can be combustible. Next we're going to talk about PPE. You want to make sure you got a good set of welding gloves to protect your hands, a pair of pliers so you can grab any hot parts, a striker, do not use a Bic lighter, and another important one is your welding rod. This is an RG45 rod which is a standard welding rod for oxy and acetylene welding. One of the things I like to do is, is I like to bend the tip over to try and prevent from poking an eyeball out. We're going to talk about eyewear. We got a few different examples here on the bench. This is a goggle style with a shade 5, a plastic headband with an adjustable back strap. You can also flip the goggles up on your forehead. For, for quick view. Next is going to be your cheaper goggles but with the elastic and then sunglasses with a shade 5 that you can get from your local welding store. Next I want to talk about how to hold a torch. Everybody's going to hold the torch a little bit different but I'm going to show you how I hold it. First you can either hold it in your hand like so, with your thumb up on top. Sometimes when I'm at the bench I'll leave my thumb here or I'll move it to the back of the mixing chamber. If I'm welding overhead with the pistol grip, generally I'll have my thumb on the back of the mixing chamber. If I'm welding at the bench, this is how I hold our pistol grip. Because I'm a little bit of a shakier person, it gives me better control over the torch. On our straight torch, you can see this little little angle here on the top of the handle. That's for when you hold it in your hand. It's a place to put your index finger so you know where the torch is at. So that way if you need to pull away and adjust your heat settings, you can go right back to finding that your home position on the torch. How I generally hold our straight torch, it's kind of a lot like a pencil. For the same reasons of it gives me stability while I'm welding. Next we'll light up the torch and we'll run a puddle. I'm using our number one tip to run this puddle. So we'll go ahead and we'll light it. How I like to light a gas torch, whether it's our blue feather torch or a Harris torch or a Victor torch, I like to run the ascent the acetylene a little bit heavy to try and keep the soot down. I start giving it some oxygen, watching it. When it starts getting kind of a sharp brightness to it, you have to back off the acetylene slightly to get it to light. Next, we're going to verify that our pressure stayed on five pounds now that the torch is lit, and which we dropped a pound on the acetylene. We dropped about a pound on our oxygen. 
The reason why it dropped is because we initially set our regulators at five pounds without any gas flowing through the torch. So that's why it changed. Next, we're going to set the feather. Right now, you're going to see two cones. Right now, this is a carbonizing flame. We're going to bring it down so it just touches the inner cone. Right now, this is a neutral flame. When you get to an oxygen rich flame, when it's got way too much oxygen, you're going to see how the feather gets a nice blue sharpness to it. And that's an oxidizing flame. That's not what you want in this occasion. You want a neutral flame. So we're going to bring that cone down until it matches that secondary cone. Now we're going to run a puddle. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit here, slightly. If you want to get heat fast, you can hold the torch straight up and down. When you start getting the puddle going, you can bring the torch back to a 45 when you start getting a puddle. You want a nice round puddle, and you're just going to walk it across, making a circular motion with the torch maintaining puddle control and consistency going across your little piece of steel here. And you're going to keep running a puddle until you get comfortable doing this. And also when you start getting close to the edge you're going to find that it's going to heat up fast. And that's okay. Just pull the torch away and make an adjustment to adjust your heat so it ain't so hot. Get your puddle back again, finish off, and keep doing that until you're comfortable. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to move this out of our way. We're going to add filler rod. So we're going to take a couple pieces of mild steel here, put them on our fire brick. And we're going to give it just a little bit of a gap. Maybe about the width of a, a sharpened number two pencil. Just a little bit of a gap. So next, we're going to start by tack welding our, our coupons together here so they don't squirm around on us while we're welding. Go up to the end, put the heat in, add the filler rod that will tack it in and it will keep it from squirming around on you. One thing that you want to keep in mind is if you're a right handed welder, so you're welding from right to left, you want to keep the filler rod in front of the torch as you're going across. You don't want to be behind the fire. So whatever direction you're welding, you got to keep the filler rod in front of it. So well now we'll start here at the opposite end, start getting it molten, we'll add some filler rod, get our puddle going, we'll keep our filler rod close by so it's already preheated, won't cool the weld down. We're going to kind of use the rod to help keep the puddle nice and round. It's very important is you want to maintain your puddle. And you don't want too big of a puddle because otherwise that's telling you that the weld is a little hot. I kind of just dab the, the welding rod in, in and out, in and out as I'm going across. And when you get to the end, as things are heating up, you might have to stop turn the torch down or you might be able to add a little bit more filler rod to help cool it down. So this is the back side 
of our weld. As you can see, we got very good penetration on the bottom. You can kind of see the ripple from where we're going across here. That's kind of what you want to see. That's exactly what you want to see. The top side don't look too bad itself either. You can see that we got nice ripples going all the way across. Our, our edges are not sucked in. In fact, I'm going to take this over to the wire wheel bench quick. We'll get it cleaned up so you can get a better view at it. So we're back from the wire wheel. Let's take a look at what I did. So we did our tack weld here and we started on this side. You can see that we got some nice weld laid down here. We got some nice nickels all the way up until you, you see here on the end where it started getting a little hot. It's flat looking and we also got a little crater there. On the back side is exactly what you want to see when you make your weld. We got nice flow. You can see the direction of the flow and we got nice nickels. And you can see here by this mountain that we have excellent 100% penetration. When you get comfortable doing that, challenge yourself to the next step and take a couple pieces and stand them upright. I'm going to try and do this without any clamps or anything. Get our gloves on. We'll start the torch. We'll get going. So we're going to start by making a tack, just like we did before on the opposite end from where we're going to start. You're going to want to get some molten steel. You start seeing a little bit of a puddle, add your filler rod, now you're tacked. One thing that you're going to notice right off, right out of the gate, you're going to need a little bit more heat. So just adjust your torch accordingly. Get a little puddle going, start working your way across. Feeding the rod, keeping a nice puddle inside there. Keep your rod close so it's a little bit preheated. Keep your torch at a 45 degree angle. Unless you need to add more heat, then you can roll it up towards the 12 o'clock. Again, when you start getting towards the end, you're going to start getting hot. So go ahead and turn your torch down a little. Start back a little bit from where you ended. And there you go. That's one beauty in gas when you're welding chrome molly or something is you can stop, make an adjustment, and continue on. We got good penetration, we got a good looking weld. I'm going to take this over to the wire wheel and we'll show you what we did. So we're back from the wire wheel on our second piece. Let's see how I did. On the top here, you can see that the well laid in very nice into that groove. We got nice nickels laid in. And on the end here, once again, I got hot, but the rest of the weld looks pretty good up on top. Let's see how we did on the back side. The back side, I would call that excellent penetration. We got nice rolls of weld down below here. Just keep practicing. You'll get it. You need, if you're getting frustrated, take a 15 minute break. Come back in an hour, do two, three welds at a crack. When you're ready, weld up another one. When you get two of these put together, weld them together. It's steel. Have fun with it. I want to show you a couple of examples 
of too hot and too cold of a weld. This one here is too hot. You can see how the weld is kind of concaved inside. The nickels aren't really standing out all that well. On the back side, we got good penetration. It's a, it'll be a strong weld. It just physically doesn't look all that good. And it's probably not going to be as strong as a proper weld as the first one that I showed you. The next one is going to be cold. You can see here that we got a big ridge. The weld itself looks pre pretty decent, but when you flip it over, you can see that there's not much penetration on the back side. Very, very minimal. Would it work? It probably will work for most projects that, that you're going to be working on. And when you get comfortable welding steel, watch our aluminum welding video. It'll teach you how to weld aluminum. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Email, call, Facebook. Happy welding.